Hey, Steve Minotti here at High Octane Classics in Auburn, Massachusetts with another muscle car walk around, or more specifically, a pony car walk around. This is a 1966 Mustang GT, and this is a 1970 Ford Mustang Boss 302. Only a few years separate these cars, but how different these things are. Now, the Mustang was in its final, or its humble beginnings in 1966, having arrived midway through 64. This is a special one. It's a GT, which is about the, at the pinnacle of performance and handling for a Mustang in 66, short of a GT. GT350, which is a whole different creature. Meanwhile, the Boss 302 has a Boss you know, 302 cubic inch canted valve engine, 290 net horsepower. These are pretty serious road race candidates. But getting back to the GT, one thing we see on this one here is the optional $63 rally pack consisting of these fog lights right here. Not standard on GT, but optional. Again, $63 well spent. But something new for 66 was the floating horse motif in the middle, unless you had the rally pack, and then you get these horizontal bars which are reminiscent of the 1965. So a Mustang from 66 without the rally pack won't have these bars. It's a little bit cleaner, but again, I think I'd rather take the rally pack with the lights. Going inside, this one here has the 289 four barrel. Now the GT could not be had with a six cylinder or a two barrel 289, strictly there were 289 four barrels, either the A code with 225 horse or the K code, the big dog, with 271 horsepower and solid lifters and a whole bunch of improvements inside. Now we know what, what changing this one is. We go to this, the VIN, and here is the letter A in the fifth spot. That's the 225 horsepower base engine for the K or the GT. Nothing wrong with that. And again, this also has manual disc brakes, which are standard equipment on this one. Uh, power brakes would not arrive until 1967 when the Mustang got larger, had an optional 390, and needed more braking power. But these had manual discs or drums, depending on the specification. This one does not have air conditioning, which is fine by me. Less can be more. But something cool on this one, this is a hardtop. You get a member of the 600,000 or so Mustangs built in 1966. The vast majority were hard tops like this. A drop in the bucket were fastback 2 plus 2s, and an even smaller drop was a convertible body. This does have a vinyl top, which adds a touch of class to the car, very formal looking. And of course, the uh, horizontal rocker stripe specific to the GT and uh, behind the front tire, where a normal Mustang or a less, lesser Mustang would have a running horse motif where the GT is. The GT dispenses with the running horse motif and gets you the grand touring GT. The only thing not seen on GT Mustangs was the uh, horizontal chrome bits right here, the gingerbread, some would say, they were deleted for the GT and only the GT, and of course the Shelby, of course, that would not have the gingerbread down here, but kind of a cool thing, it allows the, uh, sculpt, the sculpted lines of the Mustang to really shine through. At the back of the car, this one has the standard equipment, dual exhaust, which was on all GTs, including the, uh, the 225 horse base motor and the 271 horse, but coming through the valance are these chrome tips right here with a resonator behind them, and that's factory stuff, it's not aftermarket. And 1966 was also the first year for the theft-proof gas cap, with the anti-temper, that bit right there. So if you were from Midnight Auto Supply, you weren't gonna go very far with that gas cap, which is fine, voila. And then coming around to this side, the wheels on this are very special. These are 1965 specific all chrome style steel wheels. For 66, Ford decontented the wheels and used a, uh, a stainless steel hoop around the outside. But these are the 65 spec. They, they look much better. They're more expensive looking. They're beautiful. And this does have, uh, I believe, Coker radial tires with a white, white letter, white wall effect happening. But most importantly on this one, I'll meet you around the other side. We'll look at the transmission. The GT, like most Mustangs, could be had with a four-speed manual or a three-speed automatic. And this one has the desirable Aluminum case T10 four speed. Here's the stick shift for it right there. Factory equipment right there. So the reverse lockout here. And it's a nice touch that adds a lot of sport to the Mustang's two plus two persona. Another thing specific to the two plus two is the 140 mile hour speedometer and the five gauge cluster not seen on lesser Mustangs. Really attractive. The wood rim steering wheel here is also a correct piece for a Mustang. And one thing we don't see on this one is the pony interior wherein the uh, embroidered or the, the, pre, the heat pressed uh, lo logo of running horses on the seats and on the side panels is absent. This is the base interior. One thing too about these hard tops is the back seat is a full width device right here. You can see that basically, unlike the two plus two, there's gonna be a divider here, which only allows two people to sit. That's why they call them the two plus two. But on the hard top, you can get your family and three people across in the back. So much more uh, useful for a family. And also, unlike the two plus two, the hard top has a full width deck lid, 
If we open this up, you'll find that it would take all kinds of groceries, whereas the 2 plus 2 has a very short abbreviated trunk lid with much less cargo capacity. In classic Detroit technique, the Mustang evolved from year to year with its styling. In fact, we see here from 64 and a half through 1966, the trio of vertical taillight lenses right here set into pods, which do a nice job of differenti differentiating the Mustang from other cars on the road. So by 1970, that th the theme was still in effect, and we see it right here on the 70 Boss 302. But again, here's the triple vertical red taillights, but they're very different. This is a metal bezel right here, and it's a whole different look, but it has the same theme. Nothing wrong with that. Great looking car, 1970, 1966. Both of these things, the top of their class for their time. But something we see on this one, of course, is the full width rear seat, the full size trunk lid, trunk spoiler, or trunk area, trunk lid, and uh, lots of room for cargo. But speaking of no room, the back seat of the 70 right here is classic, like 65, two plus two. You can see the drive shaft tunnel is uh, bisects the seat. And I don't think I'd want to sit on that for more than about 10 seconds at a time. And something we don't see in 1970, on any Boss 302 is a vinyl top, something that was optional, very much so, in the 60s, and very classy look on these things. And something, too, we didn't, never see on a 66 is a trunk spoiler, but by the 1970 model year, sp spoilers and strats became a big deal in a marketing thing, matte finishes and paint jobs like that. So a lot of NASCAR touches added to the car. But again, still pretty tasteful and docile. The 66 Mustang GT, sedan or hardtop is a very popular car then or now. To learn more about this one here, check it out on the Higher Classics website.